Hey, KEWP uh, listeners. Today I'm here with uh, Jennifer Bradley. Uh, Jennifer Bradley is a practitioner in Jin Shin Jiu Jitsu. And um, before we get started, let me just remind everybody if you like what we're doing, please hit that subscribe button and also please give us a like. And uh, we really appreciate that and that helps us out. So, Jennifer, a lot of people aren't going to know what I just said <laughs> is. <laughs> Please, that is true. Please enlighten us. Great. Um, thanks for having me here. You're excellent. Welcome. I'm really happy to be here. So, Jin Shin Jutsu, which I, I like to, my, my clients and patients who are trying to figure out, I say, Jin like a drink, Shin like your leg, Jutsu like the martial art. Right. Comes from Japan. Um, but it is an innate practice that we all know how to do. It, uh, we think of energy as flowing through the body to build and create and clean and clear and rebuild the body. Um, and we use very light touch on the body to help, help the body come back into harmony when there's been disharmony created. So how does that get, dis get created? Disharmony can come from the food you eat, the air you breathe, the environment, um, your genetics, your mental emotional states, all those things. So the body is always wanting to move into balance. And so it can do it on its own. We call it homeostasis. But we in Jin Shin Jitsu can be a helper to that or a facilitator, or what we like to call ourselves a jumper cable, mm -hmm. to spark the body system so it can put itself back into balance. Why do you think that the Eastern part of the world, Japan, China, why do they focus a lot on energy in the Western world kind of discounts that? You know, it just, it starts with philosophy. Mm -hmm. When you go back to the Eastern thought, a lot of that traditional thought is more on a, what we call in Jin Shin Jitsu a physio philosophy, the philosophy of, philosophy of the body connecting it with nature, the natural, the natural way the body works, a little different. Now, in the Western way, we think of the body more like a machine. Things break, we fix them, symptom cause, you know, um, symptom change. A, um, a chain stops working, you oil it. You don't go back to what made it so that that chain didn't move so smoothly. Um, what Eastern thought goes back to try to find what the cause is. And in the physical body, the cause might not be where the symptom is. Your knee hurts, you've had some issues there, you're having pain. Um, I don't generally work at the knee because there's this whole system of flowing energy that actually passes through the knee, but it goes elsewhere in the body. So there may be some disruption somewhere else in the pathway. So those are kind of two different things. Have a headache, take an aspirin. Sure. Um, with Jin Shin Jitsu, have a headache, we listen to the pulses like traditional Chinese medicine, tells us what's happening to the energy in the body because there's many different lines of energy that flow through the head. So a headache isn't just a headache. There can be different causes for it. So we're, we're looking for causation. Right. So when you have a patient come see you, um, basically you assess through, you talk to them, you, mm -hmm. you get an idea of what's going on, you, you do a physical assessment on them, um, how, it, does that, how does that work? So it's some of all those things. Okay. Someone will call or come in for a specific reason. For example, um, so let's say they've had a car accident. Um, so they have back, neck, and shoulder pain. So I'm going to do sort of a physical assessment, just what the body looks like. We don't, we don't do palpation, um, but we'll look at the body. We will listen to the pulses. I will listen to the tenor of their voice, what they're telling me, what else has been happening in their life. Um, and then they will lie down at my table on their back. I like to generally have them without a pillow first, if I can convince them. A lot of people are used to having a pillow. But you can get a better idea of the alignment of the structure. Also, if I get a chance, 
when someone comes, I like to watch them walk in. I like to see how the body is moving. Sometimes that will give me some ideas of the way the energy is moving. So they will lie on the table, then I listen to the wrists. They might continue to give me a little history. I don't always take a full history. When I was working um, in a more medical setting, I would have the medical record to look at, and I would look at it. I would actually go way back in the record to kind of get the history. But in this case, I don't always have that. So I listen to the wrists, and that tells me not what's wrong with someone, but what the body's doing to move it into balance. The physical body is the history of the body. The energy of the body is what's happening now. So from that, I will make an assessment of what I'm going to do. They just lie in their back, put a blanket on to keep them warm. And then I just apply light touch on the body, both hands, uh, just like putting one hand on top of the other. That's the weighting of it. There's no rubbing, no manipulation, no pressure. And it's in specific locations on the body. We call them safety energy locks. So Western medicine will call them trigger points. They're, they're areas that we tend to touch and rub, lots of joint areas. We also hold the fingers, the toes, the spine, depending on what we're working on. And as I work, it's kind of like watching ice melt. Mm -hmm. I just sit with my hands very quietly in a place, and I'm listening with my fingertips the most sensitive part of your hand. And from that, I can feel a pulsation, not always aligned with the heartbeat pulse. It can be varied between two hands. It can also have a texture, pounding, soft. It can be staccato-like. You know, we have all these descriptions that describe the energy and the depths and how it's working. And I wait until that starts to harmonize and balance. Then I move on to the next placement. In what these and these step-by-step -step practices sequences we call flows, so we will move through a flow. It's not verbally interactive with the patient or client, um, unless a discomfort comes up. They tell you. They'll tell me, and I ask them to tell me. And if they get a pain or something goes numb or something, you know, if they need to be readjusted, we'll do that. Oftentimes, it's an old injury that's come up, and so it's just telling you that energy's blocked there. So we you know, can move our hands to kind of help facilitate the movement there, and then we keep going. I watch the body a lot, too. I watch the breathing to see if they're getting full expression of breath. I watch their fingers because fingers and toes and arms and things will move as pathways open. Same with the feet. And that is telling me the expression of how energy is flowing along these pathways. So a treatment's about an hour. People oftentimes fall asleep. That's great. I wake them up right. when we're finished. But then when we're done, since this is a circulation, like your blood, like your lymph, like your lungs expression in and out of the body, um, it has a cycle. So there are different cycles, eight hours, 12 hours, 24 hours. I always ask people before they decide, especially the first time, see how you feel tonight. See how you feel tomorrow as this works through its system. And I think people have a really deep knowing as to whether Jin Shin Jitsu is something that they want to pursue and are interested in. I don't necessarily always prescribe. The only time I prescribe um, a certain number of sessions is if people are receiving chemotherapy, radiation, or they've had surgery. Because right. they're going to be getting it continuously. They're going to get it continuously, get things in balance, then they get more radiation. So it sounds like we do a lot of similar things as far as the evaluation of the patient goes. Mm -hmm. um, do you work with traditional Western medicine pe uh, people who practice chiropractics or doctors, therapists, etc.? Do you work with those as a team? Yeah, absolutely. Well, when I, w I was at UK for 10 years, and while I was there, I worked um, hand in hand with an oncologist, um, the people in chemotherapy. I worked with um, the radiation specialists in the NICU. I worked with the physicians and the nursing staff and things when they were assessing patients and bringing them. And then I would, of course, my information was in the medical record too, so they could see what I was doing. And I really believed in, um, I'm not an alternative medicine person. I believe in collaborative medicine. 
So that real integrative approach, I liked them to know what I was doing. I wanted to know their perspective. And I found, and then outside of UK, I've worked with chiropractors, physical therapists, and then psychiatrists, psychologists too, because of that mental, emotional aspect. So, and I like the interaction. I learn a lot. And I think we learn from each other and then the patient benefits. Sure, now I thought it was interesting that um, you also practice on animals. And uh, just instinctively, when I touch an animal, if I'm petting an animal or something like that, I, it has a very calming effect on me. Mm -hmm. I assume it has a calming effect on the animal, but tell us a little bit about what you do with animals. Yeah. So, I love the animal work. It's, uh, it's great. It, they really are the same as humans. They have these same 26, what we call safety energy locks on the right and the left side of the body. They're placed a little different because most of our four-legged friends are, you know, they're in a horizontal position. And so we use the same thing, very light touch on the body. There's certain locations we don't necessarily use all the time because horses don't necessarily like their hooves touched or they'll pick them, pick them up and in safety, you don't want to get struck. Um, dogs and cats don't always like their feet touched. But we, it's the same kind of thing, light touch on the body. We use it with the animals. I like to work with animals who've had a lot of like rescue, abuse, neglect, but even animals who've changed owners or end of life. Like for example, I have a 34 year old pony I'm working on right now who is nearing end of life. So this is a quality of life issue. He's starting to eat better. He's happier. He's grazing. Now, am I going to prevent um, the end of his life? Probably not. But am I going to give him some good benefit? Absolutely. So it sounds like you, you treat the whole body. Mm -hmm. It also sounds like you're treating uh, an emotional part. Yes. Uh, is that some of what you experience when you work with people that they have emotional release as Absolutely. well? Absolutely. And you know, you, there, there's this issue that people struggle with. Did my emotions cause my illness? Sure. There's this talk. And I think there's many factors as we talked about at the beginning, environmental, diet, lifestyle, genetics, those things. But the mental emotional aspect definitely plays a part especially stress and anxiety, because we know that's the trigger to put people over the top for illness. So if we can help calm, and Jin Shin Jitsu seems to help calm that autonomic nervous system, then people tend to do better. And then of course, if they're feeling better, what we find like when I was in the hospital and I would work with PT. So PT would say, we love it when you come and work on our patients first, because they are kind of more pliable, but they're also more interested and they're more accepting of the work. They're, they're more interested in helping themselves. So that's a great outcome too. Right. If, um, if I come in one day and I have a headache, mm -hmm. okay, to me, I think, well, it could be my allergies, mm -hmm. my sinuses are acting up and it's, it's a sinus headache, or it could be I have stress, Mm -hmm. and it's a stress headache, what are, the, what are some things that I can do to help myself in a situation like that? Because you talked a little bit about you teach some self-help right. techniques to people. Yeah. And that's something that I have dealt with most of my life is, is, is headaches. Mm -hmm. So is there anything that you can teach me that I could do to help with my yeah, headaches? Yeah, absolutely. So the component of self-help is doing the same thing that I do, but working on your own body. Generally, there are one or two, maybe three steps. We don't always run people through long sequences, though there are some. So for headache, if I was assessing you for headache, you told me that oftentimes it can be associated with sinus yes. and allergies. So that, to me, thinks immediately of a particular hold that we would do. There's a there's an energy, we call it stomach function energy. It goes through the sinuses. And so one of my favorite things to give people, especially when it's related to allergies, is to take one hand and hold your cheekbone. And you'll feel, sometimes you'll feel a tender location. We don't always palpate, but people sometimes do. And I like to cross my hand, 
rather than do the same side, but only because it's a little more effective and efficient. So crossover. Mm -hmm, crossover. And then we take our other hand and we put it right here on the collarbone. Somewhere, you know, below the collarbone, close to the central lateral, um, just wherever feels comfortable. Now the key to the self-help is if it feels comfortable. And you're I'm not putting away. pressure at all. I'm just, Only just, enough just, to keep just, your hands Just a touch, place. okay. Just a touch. But people have a feeling of, sometimes they'll do this and they'll go, oh my gosh. I'm feeling so relaxed. There's this knowing immediately. Um, or they'll say, wow, I don't like that. That's uncomfortable. Or that makes me irritable. That's, I don't like that. But this is one of my favorites. This does a couple different things. Uh, we use this for allergies and for headache, frontal sinus headache. Is there a time? I mean, what length of time that yeah, you um, say? I like to say you can do two or three minutes at a time. Okay. You can you do both sides? Do, generally, we tend to do the side where you're experiencing okay. the discomfort, unless I know that the that energy crosses over to the other side, so I might have you here to work on. Like if your headache was more that your eyes were hurting, I would have you putting your head at the occipital on the opposite side because there's that opposition right for the occipital to the eye and then the next hand I might have you try here and then move it here and move it here and see because liver function energy goes right through the eyes right and you might have told me something like oh my stomach's also been upset well then I'm over here or you might have said I had kind of a lot to drink the other night well that would be affecting your liver energy so I might put you on this one and then I always tell people, you know, take a few minutes on each step, see how it feels, and if you like it, stick with it. And then that's when I'm thinking, 15, 20 minutes. But it isn't 15, 20 minutes with a meditation, you know, on, or you can watch TV, you could watch the ball game. Right. Um, it's anywhere, any place. So now this you probably wouldn't do in public. But if you were in public and your head started to hurt, you might do this. This is another way you can approach it, holding your thumb. You know, sometimes when in acupressure, which does use pressure, they have you put pressure here between your thumb and the index finger. We don't believe you need to do pressure. It's like two wires coming close together and the spark travels. So it's just light touch. So this, this you could do in a classroom. This you could do at your office or in a meeting. I've used that acupressure point mm -hmm. for 35 years. Has it been helpful? With people with headaches, mm -hmm. and it's almost always, I wouldn't say it's 100% effective, but it's most of the time right. effective. So right. I know that that works. And reflexology, where they work on the bottoms of your feet. You, you can know. make a lot of changes with reflexology. Absolutely. So. Mm -hmm. And then I've had acupuncture mm -hmm. uh, perform on me. Do your, uh, is it 26 energy locks per side? Do 26. They, are they similar side. to what acupuncture? Some of them spots line up, but, but acupuncture, they talk about points because they're very specific along pathways and there's 300 plus. Okay. Ours, we think of these energy locks as the size of your palm. So, for example, I have a friend who works on elephants in Africa. They are really big. I work on horses. A hoof is really large. Hard for me to miss with my hand. Um, but this is about how big they are. So, for example, there's one on each side here on the knee. So about so the palm of your hand? About the palm of the hand. So you can't miss them. So that's one of the difference between acupuncture. And then um, in working with acupuncturists, an acupuncturist friend of mine says that she feels like Jinshin Jitsu is different in terms of the effect you get. Um, acupuncture, and this isn't 100% true, um, is more on the physicality. Jinshin Jitsu goes into what we call the deep channels, which are, go more into the mental emotional aspect. So it's great for trauma. It's, and, but, you know, acupuncture is too. These things do cross over. I like Jinshin Jitsu because people can keep their clothes on. You can do it situationally, like my daughter, um, one time she, we were at her soccer game and one of, the, one of her members of her team jumped up and landed on the goalie. 
and you could hear this crunch in her ankle. So she's tough as nails. She didn't want to leave. So she went to the side of the field. That's what soccer <laughs> girls are, right? Um, so what I did was I talked to her, got her a blanket, and I put one hand here at this groin muscle area, and then which can help with bone. And then I put the other hand on her ankle. So she had ice on her ankle. I just put my hand on top of it, and it felt like fireworks. And so I did that until it finally started to calm down, calm down, calm down. And then I started to feel this rhythm, this rhythmic pulsation. And she had done this before. It put her out for six weeks. And we were at the state finals. So we were, you know, we wanted to win and she, we needed her. So she ended up going to the emergency room the next day because it was no point. Swelling is big. They went. Turned out it wasn't broken. She had had some ligament involvement, but um, it was completely different than the last time she had done it because she had had this. She went the next, so that was on a Friday. On Monday, we went back and went back to the game. She played. So wow. it was not 100%, but she was tough, but it was enough that she could play a really good game. And when she finished, she came running up into the stands and she just said she knew that Jin Shin Jitsu was the difference because she had had the same injury before. Right. So that's kind of fun. And that's the key. If you can get to things right away, you can make a change more quickly. Now, projects, we call them projects, um, that are more long-standing. Um, they take longer, take longer to shift and change. Yeah, chronic, any kind of chronic. Chron any kind of chronic. But when you have the acute, Jin Shin Jitsu is great for that because we can get to the source right away. So when I work on someone, I will feel uh, a release of the muscle, mm -hmm. and I will say to the person, did you feel that release? And they'll say, yes, I felt that release. So mm -hmm. as you're working on someone, can you feel similar things oh, like yeah. that happening to the, the energy? You Absolutely. You feel it become unblocked or it starts to move? Yeah, sometimes you can actually feel the energy movement, but then you see feel things like the muscles relax and then the back drops and, and lies flatter and heavier on the massage table, those kinds of things. You see people shift their body as things get more into alignment. So there's a lot of that kind of physical thing. And then sometimes they'll have something that's like, I call it poofing, because we think of two different types of energy. We think of a liquid energy and what's called a gaseous energy. And sometimes people will have like a poof sort of thing. And that is the gaseous energy release that's no longer needed or no longer in balance. And so that's one of the ways that the energy will be put back into balance. That's kind of an interesting one. People don't do it on purpose. It just kind of comes up. So what about uh, yoga, meditation, things where you're doing physical things, but mm -hmm. they're trying to put the body into balance. They're trying to do things so that you um, kind of become part of that homeostasis. Mm -hmm. Do you work with people who go to yoga and say, my yoga is improving because of this? Or are you mm -hmm. having people that do meditation and say, my meditation is getting better because of this? Yeah, so I haven't worked directly with people with meditation, but one of the things people say when they receive Jin Shin Jutsu is that they get, especially when they come off the table, that they have not only a physical change, but they have a quieting of the mind like meditation. So so what is that? That's energy has started to move. We think of energy as going down the front of the body, that's the exhale. Up the back of the body, that's the inhale. Let go, receive. Let go, receive. So when people, especially people who are in their heads, big thinkers, mathematicians, um, sometimes I have executives I'll see before a big meeting because they want to have an open mind to be able to have some inspiration come in. So this will clear. So that's that meditation mind. Now with yoga, so I've got a, my yoga instructor, Lissa Sims here in town, she's excellent. We had a little science experiment the other day at, med at a yoga class where we did a Jin Shin Jitsu practice that we call the main central, the main energy of the body gets things moving in alignment where we put one hand on top of our head, we're lying down, and we just kind of do a plumb line a little bit, step by step. It's kind of along the chakra system. So we did this, and then we did our yoga practice. 
And what people noticed was their bodies felt more pliable, things felt more relaxed. And I and my, when I do a lot of yoga, that's what I like. I'll notice if I have a tension in my body, I'll think what energy lock is there. And so I'll just, as I'm doing the practice, I'll hold the energy lock for a minute. I'll feel things release and I can go deeper. So it's just kind of fun to practice. And all these things, yoga is about moving energy. Meditation is about moving energy, getting things moving and clear so you can be, you know, centered and in a whole place so you can receive this abundance. Have you had injur injuries in your life? Have you had injuries that you've had to Not kind of work through yourself with your own? I haven't had a lot. Um, I've been really lucky that way. I did break an ankle. I, well, I've broken an ankle. I've broken a wrist. Um, and then when I was in high school, you know, stupid thing hit my head on the, um, the windshield, um, didn't really get hurt, but, um, it was interesting. We do this practice called holding your ones. Those are your insides of your ankles. So we do a practice where you hold them every day for an hour consciously. And it kind of helps unwind the body, these things that have happened because, what we notice is when things get into balance, we start to unpeel these layers. Um, for example, I had a cancer patient who I saw a lot. And the more I worked with her, things kept coming up, like, oh, my shoulder hurts. Well, when I was in 35, I was in a car accident, and that would feel better. Then, oh, my wrist hurts. Oh, when I was a teenager, I you know fell off a horse and did this. We went back with her until she was six years old and she remembered falling off the jungle gym and hitting her head. So these things stay in the body. Like for example, you think of somebody who has some um, acne. So what do people say about acne? Don't worry, they're gonna outgrow it. You know, teenager, that's gonna dissipate, that's gonna go away, it's gonna be fine. Well, it doesn't actually go away. The disharmony of the deep tissue that's creating the acne just gets kind of covered under another layer. You know, we're just layers and layers of experience and change. And, you know, not all of it is negative either, right? Right. So Jinshin Jitsu is interesting that way, that we talk about it as unpeeling these layers. So back to me, I'm in pretty good shape. But I did, as I'm doing this knee practice, I noticed one day, I have this really tremendous pain in my forehead. And this is one of our energy locks, number 20, because they have a cycle. Um, and what came to me was when I had had that accident. That was the only other time I've hit my head. And so I worked with that until I felt it dissipate and go away. So that was just kind of interesting. I think it's good for a practitioner to have some self-experience. Absolutely. You relate it. I say that in my practice, I've had every injury that you've had. No matter uh -huh. what you come in the door with, I've probably had that injury. Really? Yeah. So I've always I can always say, well, I understand what happened because I had I did that same thing at, at some point in my life uh, too. So it's I think it's good for me to have uh, an understanding of what they're feeling because I probably felt that too. But now you don't get energy, right? You yeah. you you you're not like some practitioners of certain things. They 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 try to give or take energy. That's not what you're doing. You're just allowing it to kind of move from point A to point B. Right. And you're just providing it right. a, a pathway to do so. As and it's not that those other things aren't possible. You know, there are some practices where they talk about, I found this, you know, they'll run their hands and they'll find the hot spots. And these are areas of disharmony. It's another way of kind of finding them. But they will clear them or take them out or block them. And I've been trained in that. I know how to do that. I don't really use it. Um, every now and then I will. Um, or they will fill someone up. They're fatigued. They're depleted. I'm going to fill them. And I'm not saying it's wrong or right. I'm just saying with my practice, that's not how we practice. We think of the body as being able to do what it needs in its own timing. So we are merely facilitators. We're the spark, the jumper cable for the, the body to do it in its own way. You know, another idea of an outside source is like a TENS machine, right? Yeah. Pain in the lower back. So now we hook up and we use the TENS machine and we do get relief. It may not be um, forever relief. We might have to continue to use the machine. Um, but hey, 
that's good too. Mm -hmm. You know, to each his own whatever works. Um, that doesn't, that's more of a symptomatic approach. I want to know um, if somebody has lower back pain or sciatic pain, I ask a couple questions. You know, I, I want to know kind of what's been going on with them emotionally, and I just listen to what they tell me. I don't, I'm not a psychologist, right. psychiatrist, I don't do that. But I ask a couple things. So if you're having sciatica, does it go down the back of the leg? That's one form of energy. Does it cut across the hip and go down the side of the leg? That's something else. So I do ask some specifics that way. That will tell me which energy is not, really not flowing as it should. And so it's kind of interesting. How long have you been practicing? Well, I started, I started studying in 2003. So in 2003, my, my, I have a family member who was diagnosed with cancer in California. So her oncologist at UCSF had a Jinshin Jitsu practitioner in his office as a free service. Actually, this woman's a friend of mine, and she was doing this 10 years before my sister walked in the door because they found that he, he found that his patients were just doing better. You know, and back then, the treatments in the 90s were much harsher than now, not that they're easy now. So my sister had really positive benefit on the side effects of chemotherapy, nausea, fatigue, appetite, um, you know, just lethargy and gray ashen color, all these things that are pretty standard for people. So she just had a big change and I got interested and I was helping my mother-in-law through cancer here, found a practitioner in Louisville, took some sessions for myself and what I came to realize, we don't always know where we're at in our lives. First time I laid on that table, I learned a couple things. One was, I wasn't breathing. I couldn't breathe. I could not exhale. I could take a breath, but I couldn't let it on, let it out. And in my life at that time, I was pretty stressed, but I didn't know I was. I thought I was really chill. I was, my kids could have told you I was. <laughs> but so this is a, so Jin Shin Jitsu, the other kind of tagline we have is, now know myself because this is about getting to know this body so after i started taking sessions and things and I, I started studying that year so i studied for five years and um, became authorized i guess within a couple of years but continued to study until i opened my first office in 2008 and i shared a location with an acupuncturist so that was kind of fun mm -hmm. A traditional Chinese acupuncturist who was um, came back and forth from Louisville, and uh, then I had my practice. And then I, in 2011, 2010, I started volunteering at UK, and at um, oh no, I volunteered for Hospice of the Bluegrass. Did a lot of palliative care work, um, just as a way to get my hands on people to learn more. So I did that. Um, I ended up at St. Joe's working with hospice patients there. It just, you know, well, like you with physical therapy, right, right. right? The more you work with the body, the more you understand the structure and what will help, and the more you understand the energy of it. Right. So, um, so it's been a long journey. Still learning, still growing. This is a lifetime study. But you're in, you're in private practice in Lexington. I am. I have a private practice over on Richmond Road. Okay. And, uh, but I also go to people's homes, uh, mostly to treat their pets. Out, I go out to horse farms, um, so I travel around. Right. But most people come to my office, um, but I do see people in hospital. Um, I will see people sometimes, um, I'll sit chair side for their chemotherapy in some of the clinics, clinics in town. They'll allow me to sit and work with the patients because I can do it in such a way that I'm, I'm out of the way. I'm almost like a, another family member. Right, right. Well, listen, this has been fascinating to me. I'm sure our uh, listeners uh, are appreciative of you taking the time today to come in and, and talk to us. So if you have questions or if you uh, want to get in touch with Jennifer, in the description we'll link your contact information. Right, so I have a web page and um, you know, I've got Instagram and all those things. and. You know, and my goal is to connect with all different kinds of people because what I found when I was at UK, I had a video there, an informational video that was um, just about cancer and about patients, and it got put on a website 
um, just with some information about finger holds for the emotions, which are super powerful. Right. And that went up to 680,000 views. But what happened when it really jumped was that the interest went from cancer age people to 25 to 34 equal men and women. And what that tells me is people are stressed, people are looking for things to do instead of drugs and alcohol right. or medications. And Jin Shin Jitsu is a great great practice, especially the practice of self-help, where you don't have to come see me all the time. Right. You can take care of this body and get some awareness. It's powerful. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Kelly. You're very welcome. Appreciate right. it.